So we managed to get a formulation for closest inequality, which is that the cyclic integral of delta q over t has to be smaller or equal to zero. Okay? Otherwise, if you sum up delta q over t everywhere in your cycle and you end up with something positive, this means that you are violating the second law of thermodynamics. Okay? If not, if it's equal to zero, this means it's reversible. So I will summarize this here. So if your calculations delta Q over T give you a value which is smaller or equal to zero, so what you are suggesting as a cycle is possible. Well, possible from a fundamental point of view. We are not talking about something possible like when you design it, okay? You have other constraints in this case. If you calculated delta Q over T and you found this is equal exactly to zero, well, it's cool because it's more than possible. You designed a reversible cycle. And if you calculated the delta Q over T everywhere, and you found it positive, this means that you are violating the second law of thermodynamics. This is a violation of the second law. To illustrate this, so let me sketch here kind of a PV diagram. And if I tell you that at home I have a very smart cat, and this cat is capable of designing or sketching any arbitrary cycle. Okay, so last time the cat sketched the following cycle from one to two, to three, to four, to five, to six, and then going back to one. And my cat told me that there are different thing, things happening on this cycle. For example, here from one to two, a heat is provided and this heat is let's say call it Q12 from 2 to 3 we have work out which is work 2 3 uh, here actually from 3 to 4 heat is provided to the system and let's call it Q34 here heat is rejected okay and let's call it for Q45. Here, work is added. Work 5, 6. And here also, let's say heat is rejected. And let's call this Q61. Okay? So my cat designed this cycle. And my role actually is to invest in my cat's company. My cat is claiming that this is possible, it's a revolutionary cycle, and my role actually is to say, well, is it possible or not, okay? At least from a fundamental point of view. And interestingly enough, I have a very strong tool now, and this tool is called closed use inequality, because it's telling me that depending on this calculation here, delta Q over T, over all the cycle, I can say if it's possible, reversible, or go home. Let's do it for this cycle. So what do we have here? Remember we have just to calculate it, delta Q over T, that's it. Between 1 and 2, do we have heat involved? Yes we do. So basically we can write Q 1 2. But it's not just the heat, remember, it's the temperature also. So we have to know from where this heat is coming from. Let's call it temperature of a reservoir 1 2. Then, 
from two to three, what do we have? We have work. You see, work, we don't care about it, okay? So just forget it. It's only heat. From three to four, we have also Qn, so plus Q34 over T34. From four to five, we have heat, but this is rejected. You remember that when we reject here, it's negative. So in this case, minus Q45 over, where is rejecting this heat? In a reservoir at a temperature T45. We keep going. We did four, five. Now five, six, work, it's fine. And from six to one, we have also heat rejected. So it's minus Q61 over T61. So I have the summation of the four terms here. And if now I'm given values, for example, of the heat, 100 kilojoules, the temperature is 600 Kelvin, and we keep going, I sum up all this. If it's smaller or equal to zero, the summation of all this, so you see we have negative terms here. So therefore, it's possible, okay? From a fundamental point of view, it's possible. Okay, so now I can further investigate this and probably see is it worth it to invest in my cat's company. If the values, actually when I sum up the values, it gives me zero, it's wow, it's reversible. So it's even better, okay? So the cat managed to design a reversible cycle, okay? Which is quite a good achievement, not even, not just for a cat, okay? But if now the summation is higher than zero, so basically this cycle is violating the second law of thermodynamics, okay? So this means that it's either wrong or it's completely new breakthrough, okay? But in any case, there is no way actually I will be investing in this because it will be risky at this stage and I can, cannot even patent it, okay? Because you cannot patent a cycle that violates the second law of thermodynamics so far, okay? So now let's see one of our best cycles, which is Carnot cycle, okay? You remember for Carnot cycle, We had four different processes, okay? We had isothermal heat addition, isothermal heat rejection, okay? And we had adiabatic compression and adiabatic contraction, okay? So we had four processes. Interestingly enough is that, let's look at the first one, adiabatic compression. It's adiabatic, so Q is equal to zero. So we don't even talk about this guy. Plus, now let's assume we know we have heat addition, isothermal heat addition. So basically, we'll be writing Qn over T, okay? Which is Th, T high. I will just write this as Th. Then what we have, we have adiabatic compre uh, expansion, sorry. It's adiabatic again, Q is equal to zero. And the last one is isothermal heat rejection, okay? It's heat rejection, so we have to put minus QL and reject it to a reservoir TL. So this is what Carnot cycle is giving us. But, okay, in a Carnot cycle, what do we have? Carnot cycle, we have that the ratios of the heat is equal to the ratios of the temperatures. Okay? So this means that my QH over TH is equal to QL over TL. So this means that this term is equal exactly to this term. So 
this gives me that the summation of all the terms here will be equal to zero, okay? And from there, I can claim that Carnot cycle is a reversible cycle, okay?